Hi, I'm Eddie Conway, and in this episode of Rattling the Bars, we examined various prison strikes in the U.S. and the common thread of inhumane prison conditions. Before we go there, according to a report by the Prison Policy Initiative, the American criminal justice systems hold more than 2.3 million people in 1,719 state prisons, 102 federal prisons, 942 juvenile correctional facilities, 3,283 local jails, and 79 Native American reservation jails, as well as in military prisons, immigration detention facilities, civil commitment centers, and prisons in the U.S. territories. Despite state repression, prisoners still challenge the prison industrial complex and its inhumane policies. In states such as Georgia, California, Alabama, Texas, Utah, and Wisconsin, prisoners organize hunger strikes and labor strikes in response to issues including indefinite solitary confinement, brutal attacks by the guards, lack of education opportunities, and slave labor. Prisoners recently spoke about their experiences in solitary confinement in the Wisconsin state prison system. It's really atrocious. When you put somebody in a situation where they're in the box, literally, and they've got X amount of space to move around, you really put them in a, a condition where they can no longer differentiate between what's going on outside of who they are and what's going on inside their own mind. That barrier that exists there is no different from a wakefulness and a, sleepful, and a sleepfulness barrier. And just like when that barrier breaks down in people, they sleepwalk and crash into things, that same kind of barrier falls apart and you can't just replace it in a person in solitary confinement who's already more or less labeled a social deviant with certain um, disenfranchisements attached to them when they come home. So added to that, uh, another mental disability or mental dysfunction, I mean, we're talking a, a major problem. And all of the resources that are given from tax dollars, from schools, from kids' education, go towards this very system that are, that are making the very people that they're you know, entrusted to house worse. My personal experience in solitary confinement, it is a, it's a shock to be there and to find out that you have nothing to do, they don't give you anything to do, and they make it worse on you in the situation. Giving you sheets that you can read a newspaper ad through, giving you an insert of a pen, taking all your personal belongings away from you when you get there, and seem like forever that before they put you on a step where you can get them back, they give you old, outdated books, nothing to stimulate your mind that you haven't read probably a few weeks ago. That's now a hand-me-down book that so many other people have read uh, and filthy. And uh, the conditions are, 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 are cold. People don't understand how cold it is and how uh, unclean it is in there. Uh, and so it's worth that fight to be able to speak for them uh, and help them in any type of way that's necessary to change these conditions because they can't do it themselves. I've served 10 different stints in there and I've never had a visit throughout my time that I was there. So I know what they are going through. And those who do have family members, they are intentionally preventing them from coming there to see him for any little reason. That's wrong. Well, first of all, look, it is 
a fact that solitary confinement is considered torture under international law. The UN rapporteur on torture, Juan Mendez, has categorically stated that holding people in solitary confinement in excess of 15 days is completely illegal under international law. Furthermore, there have been studies that have been done, and there's, it at most have been mixed in regards to whether this has any impact on violence whatsoever. And whether it was effective in stopping violence or not, it is completely illegal and inhumane to treat people in these conditions. It's, it's torture, period. There's absolutely no justification for the systematic practice of torture that is happening in California and to over 80,000 prisoners across the United States. prison slavery, and I read it verbatim, uh, Alabama Department of Corrections compels prisoners to work without pay. Every other prison around surrounding states, in Georgia and Florida and Mississippi, they're getting paid at least uh, anywhere, you know, not minimum wage, but half a minimum wage or more. They're getting paid in Alabama 17 cents an hour. And now what people don't realize is all of your license plates people know are being produced in prison. But people don't realize Victoria's Secret, oh, I'm sorry, female, all your Victoria's Secret, yeah, made in prison, got stock in prison. All your uniforms, most of your furniture, all that is made in prison. And people don't realize that or know that. In Alabama, you got $1.5 million uh, uh, budget and payroll and all that they produce out of these prisons. And all of this work is being done by inmates. So this is what they mean by ending slavery type prisons or ending uh, 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 indentured servitude because that still exists in our 13th Amendment. No man can be held under slavery or involuntary servitude except to buy for felony conviction. Um, the cell phone was, played a part, but the other part was that there are leaders of different factions in the prison, and they were able to sort of discuss what could they do instead of fighting among themselves. Is there anything that they could do to try to change the conditions of being just constantly bombarded with violent uh, attacks, with, you know, idle time and so forth and so on? And they, at some point, uh, a number of them just decided, well, we just shouldn't work. Um, and it just uh, as, uh, it became a prairie fire. It was truly the spark that lit the prairie fire. And everybody was uh, saying, well, I'm down with that. We're not going to get up. And each group, uh, you know, you have uh, blacks and various subsets, and you have uh, Muslims, you have uh, Mexicans and let other Latinos, Hispanics, you have whites, you have Rastafarians, you have Christians, all of them, for reasons that I cannot explain how they suddenly understood how to be unified, uh, decided, yeah, we're not working, and we're down with this, and we're not going to get up, and we're going to stay united. And uh, across the prisons, in the various sets, they called each other, sent text messages, and they all agreed to do it, and they agreed on the date, and that was December 9. Recently, last year, our member organization, Justice Now, was able to pass an anti-sterilization bill to make sure um, or, or to, safe, to, to, create a, um, to create safeguards um, so that this won't happen to uh, women in the future. Um, 
what we heard was that, you know, what we heard from many of, of the women that were sterilized was that they would go into um, mm-hmm. their the, the, the health care facility um, with maybe some issues of cramps or any any type of issue that they were experiencing. Um, many times they, some of them didn't know that they had actually been sterilized until they were released from prison and were actually trying to have children and realized when they went to the doctor again, um, or their medical practitioner, uh, that they had been sterilized. Um, there is documentation that justice now was able to get a hold of, um, that was really able to be the fuel to focus this, this bill and really pass it unanimously. Um, right now, um, Justice Now and, and um, I believe it's the Board of State and Community Corrections are um, are responsible for you know making sure that this doesn't happen in the future. Um, and it, it's a really unfortunate thing that happened to many women. I mean, 214, and those are the only ones that are documented. Uh, so who knows if it happened to additional women that um, the documentation got lost. Um, we're not too sure if it happened to more women than that. With one of 100 U.S. adults incarcerated, it's important that they receive true rehabilitation to ensure positive reentry to the communities they return to. If profit and punishment are the only purpose of U.S. prisons, then they should be abolished because they don't make the community safe. In the meantime, Prisoners need a voice and outside support to ensure justice for their soul and the community they return to. Thank you for joining us with Rattling the Bars.